What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a massive day because Modern Warfare 3, the Season 3 mid-season event, is going to be dropping. Now, of course, as you guys already know on this channel, I record all my videos the day before. So, uh, you know, today will not be a video about the mid-season event. But if you want to see my live impressions, I will be live streaming it. So today, right when you're watching this video, I should be live over on Kick. That stream is going to be up around 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And we'll grind out the mid-season event until probably 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So, of course, if you have any time in between, you can hop on in we always do open lobby so if, of course if you want to squad up just say hello in the chat and get my friend code and join on in but you know like i said if you guys want to see my live impressions first and foremost before we go ahead and upload here tune to the stream and of course subscribe and hit that bell on this channel so when i do post a mid-season review you can go ahead and see the details i'm going to be discussing patch notes weapon tunings different maps you know if they're good bad go into depth with them it's a lot of stuff that we're going to be discussing so like i said hit that bell so you can stay tuned but today i wanted to go ahead and put this video together because i've been doing testing for quite a few days because i thought it'll be interesting to kind of compare the matchmaking when it comes to x defiant and Call of Duty, and I'll be real with you guys, I feel like in this video, it's going to be an extremely hot take, and a lot of you guys might not agree with me, but uh, it's really hard to say this because any content creator who says this instantly gets, you know, a target on them for life, but I'm starting to slowly believe that Scobie's matchmaking might not be a bad thing for Call of Duty. Oh my god, I can't believe that left my mouth because again, I know people are going to come at my neck for this, but please, please hear me out before you go ahead and roast me down in the comment section. X Defiant, for those who don't know, has no skill based matchmaking whatsoever. It's actually something that they pride, you know, a lot. If you guys don't know, Mark Rubin says that all the time, you know, this game is striving to have no skill based matchmaking even in the full build of the title. And it's one of their biggest selling factors too when everybody thinks of X Defiant. One of the main reasons everybody hopped into the play test about a year ago is because they advertised it with no skill based matchmaking and people wanted to give it a shot. Of course, some people got hooked, like me personally, to the gameplay flow. I thought the gameplay of this title was outstanding and even if they do add in Scobie's matchmaking, I'll still probably be here for the gameplay itself. But for a lot of other people, it really was just, you know, the, the sign of no Scobie's matchmaking that got them into the experience to give it a go. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. After every single play test, I just, I, I don't see much of a difference anymore. I truthfully do not see anything. And I know people are going to come here and say, well, JB, you only played the server test. And, you know, and in, in the server test, it probably wasn't a lot of players hopping in. Yeah, it might have been open. Yeah, anybody could download it. But realistically, how many players went in and really did the server test? And I'll agree, it probably wasn't as much as previous betas. But I am saying this video, I'm putting this video together not just based off of the knowledge of the server test, but I'm putting this video together based on the knowledge of all the play tests combined. You know, the play test here right now with the servers, and you know, all the way back to the beta that had a million plus players. Each and every time that I hop back into this experience, it was sweaty. And it wasn't completely sweated out. Yeah, I would get my fair share of casual games. But what I noticed is it's exactly, almost identical to how I get distributed matches within Call of Duty. And I, I, I didn't want to believe it at first. So, you know, I kept playing and playing and playing. But even with the knowledge of no Scobie's matchmaking being in this game, I was still sweating. I was sweating again and again and again. And it got to the point where people didn't even want to play with me in the party because uh, the matchmaking was just ridiculous for a lot of them. Again, I don't mind competing from time to time, but it got to a point where, you know, some of the other players who were squatting up with us, who might not be completely in our bracket, were just ditching the game because the experiences were horrifying in our lobbies. But again, you know, I kept playing, I kept playing, I kept playing, I kept testing. And it just, it, it, it's the same. It would give me a handful of sweaty games and, you know, a sprinkle of casual lobbies that I could completely pub stomp and get some insane gameplay on. So I went back to Call of Duty. The server test is done. I'm like, this is like the same experience. Every single time I, I go into a test, it's the same thing. And I know people say, oh, well, wait for the full launch. It's going to be massively different. I, I, I just highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. The way the server test played was exactly how every single beta played for me. Extremely sweaty. No different. So, if, if the previous beta can get a million plus players, I mean, then what about the full launch? You know what I'm saying? The full launch, I mean, the game might not even be able to get to those numbers again. So, realistically, I don't think it's going to be any different when it comes to how much sweat the game's going to have compared to these betas over to the full launch 
of the game. But as I was saying, I went back over to Call of Duty, server test is over, and I'm grinding out the game. I'm getting back into the Call of Duty flow of things and getting back into the zone. And game after game after game, get the same thing. I'm getting very sweaty matches, very competitive matches, game after game after game after game. And then a sprinkle of casual lobbies, you know. Here, here you go, drop a swarm. Here you go, drop a couple of nukes. You know what I'm saying? Here you go, go, go crazy. And then it's done. And then it's back to sweat, 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 sweat. And then it's another sprinkle of matches. And a lot of people always thought of this as manipulation. But I don't think it's manipulation. I just simply think this is how, you know, gaming is nowadays. It's just simply how gaming is nowadays. People are sweaty in the FPS community. Whether we like it or not, that is the direction these games are going. And it's always been like that since the beginning of time. Right? All... FPS games have been, I mean, even back in Call of Duty 4, you know, a lot of people like topping on that game just specifically because they like streaking up and destroying lobbies. So yes, people have always taken FPS games a bit serious, but it has evolved to a point where we are so hyper competitive in every game down to the foundation of that game. You see, back in the day, the developers were designing these games casually and people, us, we were making it a little bit more sweaty. Nowadays, the developers are literally designing the games for sweat. I mean, from the ground up, I mean, uh, let's be honest here. Activision bought out the competitive league, right? They bought out the competitive league. That's how big and popular it is. And I don't know why, because it doesn't seem like they profit that much from it. But they see potential. They see how many people like to play first-person shooters, third-person shooters, like Fortnite, competitively. They just know and see the direction of how players are playing, and that's how they design the games. They are literally designing games from the ground up with the competitive nature in mind. And it got me thinking, I truthfully think that skill-based matchmaking might need to be in COD or else people wouldn't play. And I, I know that's weird to hear. I know it's weird to hear, but seriously, hear me out. If skill-based matchmaking was removed, it would be exactly like X Defiant. And I see people all over the internet saying, oh, X Defiant and Skillbase Matchmaking removed? Did they remove it? It's no way, you know, the, the Skillbase Matchmaking is not in this game. People genuinely believe that X Defiant, out of nowhere, has Skillbase Matchmaking. Even though the developers behind the scenes are telling us every single time it doesn't, nobody is acknowledging that anymore. People literally believe that it has Skillbase Matchmaking now with how sweaty it is. Okay? I really do believe that if they removed Skillbase Matchmaking and Call of Duty nowadays, it would be horrifying. The amount of casual players that we have right now will probably diminish to next to nothing. And I worry about that with X Define, but again, I'm not here for X Define to be the next big, you know, competitive FPS game that could destroy Call of Duty. I'm not I'm not playing X Define for that reason. I'm playing X Define for an alternative to Call of Duty. So, you know, if the game doesn't blow up, that's not a big deal to me. It might be a big deal to the developers or, you know, Ubisoft. But for me personally, I'm just there for the ride to play a new fun game. That's all I want to do. It, it could have a thousand players. It could have a hundred thousand players. It could have a million players. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to be playing it. But the popularity of X Define, I don't think is going to be going through the roof because of this exact reason. No skill based matchmaking means that the majority of your lobbies aren't going to be, I guess, monitored, I guess is the correct wording. So it's not going to notice when you're getting crapped on. It's not going to give a crap if you're getting destroyed in the matchmaking, in the algorithm. It doesn't, doesn't care. If you get destroyed five games in a row, it's not going to stop the next match from being another destruction fest for the sixth game. You know what I'm saying? Whereas with matchmaking, if it's you know, noticing that you're playing horribly, it's going to eventually, you know, realistically throw you a bone. It will. At some point, it's going to throw you a bone. And it's going to feel sucky. It's going to feel like, oh, you know, it's like this game is just giving this to me. But at the end of the day, it's going to give it to you regardless. And that's what casual players want from time to time. You know, they hop on. They're tired. They're exhausted. They don't want to have to sweat for ages. You know, they want to be able to at least have a game or two where they can relax. And I don't think that's possible without skill-based matchmaking anymore. I think that if they remove skill-based matchmaking, people are going to be subject to this, the overall sweat of the community 24-7, you know, because that's just the majority of the player base now. Now, if the mass majority of the player base were casuals, I feel like it would be different, but I don't think that's the direction that we're heading here. I'll be completely honest. Between X Defiant and Modern Warfare 3, I find more casual games in Modern Warfare 3. And uh, that's even including betas, because once again, I know people are going to say, well, X Defiant isn't officially out yet. It doesn't matter. The beta that had a million plus people who played it 
was way sweatier than anything Modern Warfare 3 produced, even in a beta form for a Call of Duty game. What I notice is that in X Defiant, yeah, I might get a sprinkle of casual games every so often, but it's extremely rare and few in between. Whereas Call of Duty, it kind of feels scripted almost. It kind of feels like you, you just got destroyed. You got hammered four or five games in a row, you get thrown a bone. You got hammered another four or five games in a row, you get thrown a bone. And again, I know that feels a bit more manipulated, but for a casual player, if we're going to be realistic, for a casual player, I feel like they would rather have that bone thrown to them compared to no bones at all. If this was back in the day when the community was much more casual, I would completely agree that no skill based matchmaking is the way to go because at least there'll be variety. But from experiencing no skill based matchmaking, I just, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. All I see is sweats. Now, obviously, we know skill based matchmaking has always been in COD, even in the OGs, Call of Duty 4 through Black Ops 2. You know, all of those games had skill based matchmaking, but it was toned down compared to how it is now. And I think that's all we need to do. I don't think a removal of skill based matchmaking is needed for a Call of Duty game. I think what needs to happen is for the matchmaking to be toned down a bit. For, you know, dial it back. Dial it back. Make it a bit more relaxed, casual. And I think that will be the sweet spot for the overall Call of Duty community. Because again, I'm going to say it. I feel like if they remove skill based matchmaking completely, every single game that you get is going to be absolutely packed to the brim with people who are competitive, sweaty. And the games are built around that as well. You know, you can't just blame the sweats because casual players play sweaty too. You know, a lot of people try to do well in Call of Duty games. Whether you want to admit it or not, nine times out of ten, if you're not going for camos or if you're not trolling, you know, if you're just running around with a random gun you want to use, you want to do well with it, right? Like, I don't think you're running around, you know, wanting to get clapped. I'm pretty positive you want to get kills. So people already have the mindset that, they, yeah, you know, they want to win. They want to get kills. But the way the games are built now, they are built so competitively that the skill gap is huge. And, you know, anybody, honestly, can end up picking up and learning how to slide cancel or beginning to learn how to b-hop. There's they're such simple mechanics, but there's so many of them. And with every single game out there picking up that, you know, style with having so many different mechanics, I mean, think about it. In all the popular FPS games, you know, Rainbow Six Siege, there's mechanics to be able to move and, you know, get around. And that game is pretty slow. It's a tactical game, but there's still ways that you can give yourself an advantage over players. Apex Legends, Fortnite, it's all about movement now. It's all about these different, you know, features in the game. And again, they're easy to access. You know, back in the day, if you wanted to do something complex, like in Call of Duty 4, for example, if you want to learn how to do some real complex movement tech, you got to be good at the game. Battlefield 4, if you want to know how to do some really good stuff, you got to be good at the game. You got to go the extra mile. Nowadays, that's not the case. You don't have to go the extra mile. It's not just the sweats. These games are made so anybody can get those type of advantages pretty easily. So with that being said... I, I, I'm gonna say it again. I don't think the removal of skill based matchmaking would be a good thing for Call of Duty. But of course, go down in the comment section and leave your opinions down below. Do you guys think, you know, I'm a bit crazy here? Do you think that, you know, I'm spitting any facts? I wanna know what you guys think. Uh, you know, I, this is just from my experience of playing a lot of X Defiant. It's just everything. And like I said, even with the, the 1 million plus player beta, it was so freaking sweaty i don't even know if i got a casual game in that beta it was i was just clipping whatever i can get at that point for gameplay you know it, it's it's harsher it, it's much harsher for a lot of players to you know get in and enjoy but at the same time i did see a lot of casual players say that it just it does feel more genuine though you know even though it's extremely sweaty the matchmaking didn't feel manipulated it didn't feel tampered with and that made it feel more genuine and fun so i understand both sides and i'm curious to see what you guys have to say down below but as always ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed today's video leave a like if you hate it leave a dislike don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified for more content just like this we post daily here at 8 morning eastern time and if you want to check out any of my live streams i do that over on kick pretty much daily you guys can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video and that goes live between 1 to 2 p.m eastern time but as always thank you for tuning in i'll see you all in the next one peace out